Hello everybody, welcome back to CNS Corvettes in Sarasota, Florida. This is your Corvette buddy Lyle here to talk to you about more interesting and exciting Corvette stuff. Before we get started, if you find value in what I do and you enjoy this video, get a chuckle out of it or learn something, please like and subscribe and tell your friends who have Corvettes or interesting Corvettes about our channel so that we can continue to grow and help other people. That helps me, which allows me to help you. Today's video, I'm actually going to cover a topic that I discussed in a video several years ago, back before we had the audio quality and video quality that we have now, uh, so that I can refresh it, update it with some newer, better information, and educate you guys on what we like to call the magic button. Let me explain what that means. C5, C6 Corvettes, specifically for this video we're going to talk about. They have a traction control button on a C5. It looks just like this. That little picture of a rear end of a Corvette looks like it's being chased by two snakes. That's your traction control button. On 2001 and newer cars, you also automatically had active handling. Active handling, I'll explain how that works in a minute, but let me explain for the people who have C5s why you might not have active handling. They started offering active handling as an option in 1998, and it was an option through 2000. So your car could have active handling, or it might not. So when I talk about competitive driving mode and some other things, if you don't have active handling equipped 98, 99, 2000 car, then you're just going to be able to turn trash control on and off with this button. Let's assume for a moment that you do have trash control and active handling. Well, Lyle, what are those things exactly? I mean, I hear those terms all the time. I like listening to car stuff. What does that mean? Specifically, when it comes to Corvette traction control, the whole point of traction control is to keep your rear wheels from losing traction and spinning. Now, the system will keep you from doing that in three ways. Number one, it will retard the engine timing to make less power. Number two, it will limit the throttle input so that the, it doesn't care how hard you're pushing that throttle. If it feels you're going to spin the wheels, it's going to back off on the throttle input. So even though you think you're going pedal to the metal, you're not. And in extreme situations, it can also activate both rear brakes to actually slow down the spinning of the rear wheels so you don't lose traction. This is very important in wet weather conditions. It's important in a lot of different traffic situations where you don't want to inadvertently lose control of the car. Active handling, on the other hand, aids in controlling the stability of the vehicle by activating one or more of the individual brake calipers around the car. This is especially helpful in an emergency maneuver where you are, you know, oh, a deer runs out in front of you, you have to go quick left, quick right to get around them and not hit them. This system will keep you from oversteering or understeering to the point where it results in a spin and a loss of control. Both of these are very valuable in daily driving. They are not, however, conducive to having fun. Now, if you want to have fun, you can turn off trash control and you can do smoky burnouts all day long. That's awesome. Uh, if you want to do track work or you want to go carve up a country road somewhere, you can turn active handling to competitive mode or competition driving mode. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means two different things depending on whether you have a C5 or a C6. On the C5, if you push this button once, click, that turns off traction control, period. Active handling, if your car is so equipped, stays fully active. If, however, you press and hold this button for 6 to 10 seconds, on the earlier C5s it can take up to 10 seconds, then it will come up on your little dot matrix screen on your instrument cluster, competitive driving mode. What does that do? Well, that not only turns off traction control, it also moves active handling into a more forgiving, less babysitterish mode that allows you to get the car a little more out of shape and allows you to have a little more fun with the car. Uh, active handling 
stays active all the time. You can't turn it completely off in a C5. There is a different mode that you go into with competitive driving mode, but you can't turn it completely off. They changed that when you went to the C6. In the C6, this same button located in the same place on your center console, immediate in front of your center console door, has actually four different mo modes. Normal, uh, trash control off, push it, turn off trash control, competition driving, and all off. And you actually cycle through it by pushing, 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 and it'll come up on your screen to show you what you're doing. Let me explain the differences between those. Normal and traction control off are the same thing as the C5. Normal is the default setting where you don't push the button at all, all the babysitters are in place, and you go drive your car. Uh, traction control off, active handling stays active, and traction control is simply turned off. So you can spin the wheels, do smoky burnouts, whatever you want to do. Com competitive driving mode is also like C5, where trash control is off and you have a modified version of active handling that allows you a little more leeway before the computer jumps in to save you. And then fourth is all off, where active handling and trash control are completely disabled. Now, why would you ever, ever want to do that, Lyle? Well, let's say that you want to take your C6 to the track. Okay, let's say you go to our favorite track, Sebring. You are going to be experiencing, and your car is going to be experiencing, G-loads through the corners that the yaw sensors and the programming of your car will not be comfortable with because the car is going to think, oh, he's going through turn 17 at 90 miles an hour, <coughs> excuse me, pulling almost two Gs, that's too much, the car is going out of control, so then active handling will jump in and will either uh, activate one of your rear brakes so that you don't oversteer, even though you're not oversteering because you're in control of your vehicle, or it can lock up both fronts and cause you to plow into the wall. That's why if you're going to do track work in a C6 and you are trained and you are competent and you've done this before, the best setting is to turn everything off. If you're going out for your first high performance driving lesson, I suggest being in competition mode because you're not going to be pushing the car to the degree where it could inadvertently activate. But if you're going full race mode after you've been trained, after you're comfortable at speed on a track and know how to behave and handle out there, then you want to turn everything off so that the car doesn't accidentally intrude and make a mess out of something that was going to be a really clean, cool corner that you just took. Uh, so that is what this button does. Uh, what I can tell you from my experience is both C5 and C6 owners who haven't ever explored the options that this button gives you, they come in and they've bought this car, it's their first C5 or their first C6, and they're really kind of disappointed in the performance. Like, man, what can I do? Do I need to put a cam in it? Do I need to do a supercharger? Do I need... And I go, I, I, have you pushed the magic button? And they look at me and go, what magic button do you speak of? And I say this magic button and I go through everything that I just went through with you with them and I say listen I'll be happy to talk to you about your options as far as high performance but before you do that follow these instructions go out to a country road where it's safe and there's not a lot of traffic and go drive the car with these modes deactivated and tell me what you think and 10 out of 10 people come back and go wow that was a real difference. The throttle felt different. Everything felt different. I was able to throw the core into a corner and it didn't fight me. And I'm like, mm-hmm, that's correct. Because those babysitters are there to keep you safe in normal everyday driving conditions or sporting driving. But if you're actually going to go at nine-tenths or ten-tenths of your ability, which is probably going to be about seven to eight-tenths of the car's ability, you definitely want to turn everything off. This is not to say that you want to turn everything off and go be a Yahoo because what's going to happen is you're going to end up in the woods with a broken car that's missing parts and hating me. We don't want that. So make sure that you have taught yourself or better yet been taught by somebody who knows what they're doing, how to performance drive and how to control a vehicle before you go adventuring into the woods in your 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollar car. Please, please be responsible. And as with anything fun, the more you learn about it and the more techniques you perfect, the more fun it gets. 
trust me on this, okay? So, magic button. Any questions about the magic button, go ahead and put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. In the meantime, have a great weekend and I'll talk to you next week.